Hey everybody, this is Perch, and we've talked about status quo changes in comics for a while, but one of the things that I think is is curious is that comics seem, when I say comics, I should be more clear here, comic writers seem more obsessed lately with exactly what type of heroism the heroes get up to. You, it's not enough to just be a hero, you have to be a hero in the in the right way. And we're seeing a lot of stories that kind of dive into that. We're seeing uh, comics come out where it's uh, it's about the examination of are you being the right kind of hero? And we're seeing a lot of kind of lectures in comics where one comic character will tell another one like, you think you're a hero just because you're saving people every day and you're you know, pulling people out of burning buildings and keeping trucks from falling off bridges, but what are you doing to stop homelessness, huh? You're not really a hero. And you're seeing these kinds of, uh, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but we've seen it in some of the X titles, we've seen it in some of the DC books, um, this kind of deeper examination of what it takes to be our hero. And, or, or rather, I guess, what classifies as truly heroic. And right now, the, this is kind of the, the main crux of uh, Nightwing, which is being written by Tom Taylor, and I think is generally well-received. I mean, the, the comments I get is most people seem more or less happy with this book. Tom Taylor is this interesting guy in that uh, people like to complain about certain things he's done, but then he also kind of has this default kind of, oh, you should like his comic. Like, like Chip Zdarsky, if he writes something, the default mood of everybody is, oh, this is going to be good. And then, you know, it, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but that kind of is the default. As opposed to, you know, say Bendis announces something or Tom King announces something, and it's like the default behavior is, uh, the default mood is, oh, this is going to suck. And then, you know, maybe it turns out to be good. Who knows? But um, Nightwing, written by Tom Taylor, has this, and, and it's kind of spoilers, I guess, for the title, but nothing major. I mean, I, this was in the solicitation months ago, so this isn't exactly new information. So Nightwing uh, basically is a billionaire now, um, which which just as an outside, I think as somebody who who read Nightwing, uh, you know, through the Titans era way back in the '80s, and and just uh, who's followed that character, um, yeah, man, there that Nightwing has been Rick Grayson. He's been a super spiral agent. He's been, uh, you know, cheesecake, kind of always been that. Um, like, what? why do they keep screwing around with Nightwing? Just just, just putting that out there. But anyway, uh, we learn that um, uh, Alfred, who was murdered, um, and they haven't retconned that out yet or changed it, um, Alfred was a billionaire because he invested in Wayne Industries and basically left his money to, uh, to Dick, to, to Dick Grayson. And so Nightwing is now a billionaire. So Nightwing is trying to figure out what to do with all this money. And um, he basically goes and he talks to all of his friends about what to do with the money. And they, they have a lot of, uh, you know, talks to Lucius Fox. Why he would go talk? I mean, Lucius Fox is just basically going to say, hey, why don't you give all that billion dollars to me? Um, and he, I'm sorry. Um, and he talks to Leslie Thompson. He talks to the Titans. He talks to kind of the various people about what he should do. But in this, um, he's saying, Alfred left me a lot, but I don't think there's anything heroic about being a billionaire. Which is an interesting statement because nobody, I don't, I don't know, nobody's saying, hey, you know, the only way to be a hero is to be a billionaire. That's never been a part of comics. No, nobody thinks being a billionaire or a billionaire or kind of money at all has anything to do with comics. In fact, you know, for decades, we would often see comic characters um, living pretty meagerly. I mean, like, like, you know, Steve Rogers, Captain America had an apartment. He was uh, drawing comics for a while um, as is in his secret identity. I mean, there was like, you know, there, there were, the comic characters, many of them were not rich. And that was kind of one of the things that made would, you know, would set Iron Man and, and some characters apart is that, you know, they, the Iron Man would have his rich Malibu house and everything else, you know, but Daredevil is kind of scrapping by. He's on hard times as a lawyer. You'd, you'd have these characters who have very ordinary type jobs. And then every now and then you'd, you'd see something weird. Like you'd think, you know, how is, um, you know, broke uh, Steve Rogers, who's severed ties with the government, still affording all these uh, these attachments and vehicles and accessories and everything else. <clears throat> how is he, you know, how is he making it? 
Um, and uh, it wouldn't make a lot of sense on his salary. You know, he couldn't afford all this, but you figure he got a loan from Tony Stark or, or who knows what happened, but but something. But now in comics, there's there seems to be this need to really focus in on that. So now suddenly it's like the characters are getting richer. Um, they're falling into money. And then they're having to make these speeches about being a billionaire and heroic. And, and it's, it's, it's all very, very odd. So as he goes and talks to, uh, you know, um, he talks to all these different characters, talks to Superman, uh, Superman saying, you know, uh, I've always believed in leading by example. And the example you're setting here will inspire others. You're talking about lifting people and everything else. But it is an interesting storyline that keeps cropping up in comics, which is, what is the true nature of being a hero? And so ultimately, uh, Dick Grayson comes out and he says uh, he's basically giving all the money away. He's going to establish uh, a large, self-sustaining, purely philanthropic uh, foundation. Um, some programs will help target areas elsewhere in the world. The bulk of the money will go directly to Bloodhaven. Um, it, you know, always uh, I, I always like these uh, when when they when comics talk about setting up charitable foundations. It's clear that the writers have never actually set up a charitable foundation or talked to anyone who set up a charitable foundation. Just as an aside, it's always a little amusing. Um, I've done some work for some nonprofits and I've helped some people. I've got several friends. The Seattle area is filled with people who have a lot of nonprofit work. Um, and um, uh, yeah, this isn't how it works, folks, but well, that's fine. That's fine. So anyway, um, he basically goes and he's going to solve the homeless problem. He's going to make affordable housing, uh, access to employment, uh, rehabilitation for criminals, free renewable energy, healthcare, guaranteed living wage. You couldn't do that with a billion dollars. Just, just saying, by the way, there, that would be impossible to do with just $1 billion or, you know, a, or a couple billion, you, you would need more money than that. And not, not to say you shouldn't try and help people out, but that, that is again, kind of silly. So, um, you know, basically with this money that Alfred left him, uh, you know, Nightwing is going to solve the homeless issue, build public housing, employment, prisoner rehabilitation, public transport, free renewable energy, health care, guaranteed living wage, ending poverty. Um, and, uh, you know, this is this is what they're doing. So, OK. But as I mentioned before, it's it's a storyline that more and more comics are going to trying to get into more of these kinds of social problems and, and how do you fix them and how, everything else. And I think there's a uh, you know, there's this whole other side of it, which is, well, also, you've got crazy supervillains running around. You have dark side running around. You have you know, major apocalyptic threats that are going on on, you know, in any given week in the DC universe. And while it's an interesting kind of more real storyline, if you will, to write several comics about how Nightwing is going to solve uh, prisoner rehabilitation and free renewable energy, um, it does this make sense in a world where the Legion of Doom is going to come and just wipe out several blocks at a time? Um, some writers, I've, I've brought this up before with other writers, and they've said, well, why can't you do both? And that's fair, but you know, you need to remember to then do both because what's happening more and more lately is that the comic is becoming more about, uh, solving these kinds of issues in the pages, which all comes off as kind of pure fantasy. And the villains pretty much just show up to, I don't know, rob a bank every now and then they're easily, easily handled by the villain who is, uh, sorry, by the villain, by the hero, the hero is easily able to handle any kind of villainous threat. And, Instead, they're they're kind of spending many pages dealing with, uh, you know, public transportation. And I, I don't know. I, I just maybe this is just a well, not maybe it's clearly just difference of opinion. This isn't what I enjoy comics for. I, I you know, I, I you're free to do it. I mean, Tom Taylor, DC hired him. The editor put him in this role. He's explaining what he wants to do. So, I mean, it's his it's his party. But this seems like a strange direction for the comic to go in where, you know, it, it's, it's just not it's not built to handle this stuff in a kind of coherent, good way. I don't know. The, the, I don't have a full thought here. I, I admit, but I, but I'm just I'm wondering if anybody else is noticing this. There's this desire to kind of question what actually makes a hero, 
And in the real world, the world you and I live in, I think it makes a lot of sense to have those questions. I think it's if you're a parent, you know that there's a lot of nuance and there's a lot of, you know, doing the right thing or doing the right thing for the right reason. There's a lot of complexity to that. Um, but in a comic book, it feels like it's almost making fun of those conversations as opposed to actually doing any good. And what I mean by that is, is some of these topics, you know, renewable energy, public housing, the homeless, these are big problems that we live with in our actual world. And so to have like these fictional characters show up and kind of throw money around and set up these charitable foundations and then they, their other heroes get to say, wow, you're, you're a real hero. You're a better hero than me. I mean, I was, I was fighting uh, Lex Luthor the other day, but you're, you're solving renewable energy. It just feels like you're kind of mocking to me. That's how I take it. You're kind of mocking the whole topic as opposed to actually doing anything reasonable about it. Again, I don't know. It, I, it's, it's something I'm noticing more and more. It's something that is showing up in comics and I just don't, uh, I don't quite understand where this is all going or why. Um, and, you know, I, I lots of comments. I'm sure many people in the comments are going to come in with uh, this is kind of the socialist, uh, you know, creators that are doing this. This is uh, people who are, are bringing in politics into comics or into solve these things. I mean, sure, maybe. Um, my bigger point is why, why, you know, does anybody want to read this? I guess that's me. All right. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, and thanks for listening.